What's up everybody, this is Jay from Antmate, and today I want to show you my oldest colony of ants. These are my Iridominix Bicneli, I hope I said that right. Also known as Rainbow Ants, or where I come from, Pavement Ants. So pay a little attention to the macro lens footage of them dogpiling a cricket, rest in peace. I'm going to show you the world's quote unquote easiest ants to keep which also happened to be the far most irritating ungrateful and frustrating bunch of ants in the world to care for if you don't come prepared also hang around at the end guys because I got a cool surprise for you so let's go back a few months to where this all started I got myself a starter nest a few months ago and I thought I'd get a smaller species of ants under the pretense that it would be easy to keep them that's wrong in fact it's the exact opposite this is my first big mistake, but more on that later. I gathered some sand, I boiled it, I baked it, I put it some, with some rocks and wood I collected. This is the first problem, getting them out of the tube. They're not exactly cooperative and they stayed there until I eventually used a cold cloth to wrap around the test tube to get them out. So did they move into the hydrated formicarium? No. They burrowed under a few centimeters of sand and made a nest there. So. That was my second big mistake. I gave them far too much sand to work with. They are very timid and they can't hurt a human, and in my experience they're not the brightest ants either. The things you should read up on but don't because you're an impulsive consumer with too much disposable income are things like, they're small. They're really small. So they can pretty much get out of any formicarium. Nothing I have can hold them without them finding a way out. They're masters at it, and everyone I talk to says they can't contain them, they set them free because it's too much hassle to contain them, or they've gone to extreme lengths to contain them by keeping them in a moat. They're very picky eaters, and they'll often reject food I give them outright. They love honey though, shock to no one. I give them creamed honey so it's a lot thicker and they won't drown in it because ants are really prone to drowning in liquids so what they'll often do is cover it up with sand so I wouldn't try to give ants too much liquid, <laughs> especially small ones. And the biggest problem I have is they've burrowed in the sand and they need humidity under the sand and they're not getting it. I can't regulate it. I water it twice a week but the sand doesn't retain the moisture, mold grows and the heat pad eventually evaporates the water. Every so often they do move the brood into the water pipe because the nest is too dry, but it's it's difficult to regulate so it's time to get them out of the sand. That's something I gotta look at. It isn't all doom and gloom however. I have found some food they like and there are a lot of them maybe 150 to 200 in the colony and the heat mat can be thankful for the mass explosion in growth so I highly recommend if you if you want to get a colony going fast uh, get a heat mat and give them a heat gradient they love fish food as you can see by this idiot trying to get that giant fish flake into that little hole um, I have a better camera now by the way so I apologize for the poor footage they usually munch down on crickets though much to my surprise, I find they can't stand cockroaches, and they will generally prefer any insect over other food I give them. Watch them dismantle this fly I fed to them a minute earlier. So ideally we'd like to get them in another nest sooner rather than later or at least find a way of getting them out of the soil which I can't hydrate and regulate the humidity. So that's a project for the near future. If you like this video guys, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. The more viewers I get, the more I can justify larger projects. So you made it to the end, well, good for you guys. I thought a great way to end this episode would be to show you guys this queen I caught just last week in a park on my lunch break. She's quite large and aggressive and turns out to be an Iridominix purpureus queen or a meat ant. 
This is really exciting because their colonies number in the hundreds of thousands and they breed really fast. So she's already got a heap of eggs and she really doesn't like me looking at her. So uh, hopefully we can get some workers soon and then we can justify buying a bigger fish tank for these girls. Um, that's it for the week. I hope to see you in the next video. We're going to have a look at my rare Aussie ants. So stay tuned.